Candace Owens testified earlier this week at a congressional hearing in Washington, D.C. on <laughs> in America. And the Democrats didn't really know what they were getting into. Here's her entire opening statement, which made the Democrats almost cry. The establishment hates it when black people think for themselves and finally leave the Democrat plantation. Uh, Mr. Chairman, Ranking Member Mr. Collins, uh, thank you for having me here today. I received word on my way in that many of the journalists were confused as to why I was invited, and none of them knew uh, that I myself uh, was the victim of a hate crime when I was in high school. That's something that very few people know about me, uh, because the media and the journalists and the left are not interested in telling the truth about me, because I don't fit the stereotype of what they like to see in black people. I'm a Democrat, I support the President of the United States, and I advocate for things that are actually affecting the black community. I'm honored to be here today in front of you all because the person sitting behind me is my 75-year-old grandfather. I've always considered myself to be my grandfather's child, and I mean to say that my sense of humor, my passion, and my work ethic all comes from the man that is sitting behind me. My grandfather grew up on a sharecropping farm in the segregated South. He grew up in an America where words like racism and white nationalism held real meaning under the Democrat Party's Jim Crow laws. My grandfather's first job was given to him at the age of five years old, and his job was to lay tobacco out to dry in an attic in the South. My grandfather has picked cotton, and he has also had experiences with a Democrat terrorist organization of that time, the Ku Klux Klan. They would regularly visit his home, and they would shoot bullets into it. They had an issue with his father, my great-grandfather. During my formative years, I had the privilege of growing up in my grandfather's home. It's going to shock the committee, but not once, not in a single breath of a conversation, did my grandfather tell me that I could not do something because of my skin color. Not once did my grandfather hold a gripe against the white man. I was simply never taught to view myself as a victim because of my heritage. I, I learned about faith in God, family, and hard work. Those were the only lessons of my childhood. There isn't a single adult today that in good conscience would make the argument that America is a more racist or a more white nationalist society than it was when my grandfather was growing up. And yet we're hearing these terms sent around today because what they want to say is that brown people need to be scared, which seems to be the narrative that we hear every four years right ahead of a presidential election. Here are some things we never hear. 75% of the black boys in California don't meet state reading standards. In inner cities like Baltimore, within five high schools and one middle school, not a single student was found to be proficient in math or reading in 2016. The single mother would, the single motherhood rate in the black community, which is at 23% in the 1960s when my grandfather was coming up, is at a staggering 74% today. I am guessing there will be no committee hearings about that. There are more black babies born, there are more black babies aborted than born alive in cities like New York, and you have Democrat Governor Andrew Cuomo lighting up buildings to celebrate late-term abortions. I could go on and on, but my point is that white nationalism, white nationalism did not do any of those things that I just brought up. Democrat policies did. Let me be clear. The hearing today is not about white nationalism or hate crimes. It's about fear-mongering, power, and control. It's a preview of a Democrat 2020 election strategy, same as the Democrat 2016 election strategy. They blame Facebook, they blame Google, they blame Twitter. Really, they blame the birth of social media, which has disrupted their monopoly on minds. They called this hearing because they believe that if it wasn't for social media, voices like mine would never exist. That my movement, Blexit, which is inspiring black Americans to lead, to lead the Democrat Party, would have never come about. And they certainly believe that Donald Trump would not be in office today. Looking on the next thing to focus on now that the Russian collusion hoax has fallen apart. What they won't tell you about this, the statistics and the rise of white nationalism is that they've simply changed the data set points by widening the definition of hate crimes and upping the number of reporting agencies that are able to report on them. What I mean to say is that they're manipulating statistics. The goal here is to scare blacks, Hispanics, gays, and Muslims into helping them center, dissent, helping them censor dissenting opinions, ultimately into helping them regain control of our country's narrative, which they feel that they lost. They feel that President Donald Trump should not have beat Hillary. If they actually were concerned about white nationalism, they would be holding hearings on Antifa, a far-left, violent, white gang who determined one day in Philadelphia in August that I, a black woman, was not fit to sit in the restaurant. They chased me out. They yelled race traitor to a group of black and Hispanic police officers who formed a line to protect me from their ongoing assaults. 
They threw water at me. They threw eggs at me. And the leftist media remained silent on it. If they were serious about the rise of hate crimes, they may, they may perhaps be examining themselves and the hate that they have drummed up in this country. Bottom line is that white supremacy, racism, nation, white nationalism, words that once held real meaning, have now become nothing more than election strategies. Every four years, the black community is offered handouts and fear. Handouts and fear. Reparations and white nationalism. This is the Democrats' preview. Of course, society is not perfectible. We've heard testimony of that today. There are pockets of evil that exist, and those things are horrible, and they should be condemned. But I believe the legacy and the ancestry of black Americans is being insulted every single day. I will not pretend to be a victim in this country. I know that that makes many people on the left uncomfortable. I want to talk about real issues in black America. I want to talk about real issues in this country and real concerns. The biggest scandal, this is my last sentence, in American politics is that Democrats have been conning minorities into the belief that we are perpetual victims, all but ensuring our failure. Racial division and class warfare are central to the Democrat Party platform. They need blacks to hate whites, the rich to hate the poor, and soon enough it'll be the tall hating the short. The time of the witness has expired, Ms. Clark. Oh, stick around, because you got to see how she crushed Congressman Ted Lieu after he played a short and out-of-context clip from one of her speeches on a college campus as part of her tour with Turning Point USA. Uh, Ms. Owen, uh, Ms. Owens, I'm sorry, we just started recording. Um, would you like time to respond to that? Yes, um, I think it's pretty apparent that uh, Mr. Lou believes that black people are stupid and will not uh, pursue the full clip in its entirety. He purposely presented an extract, an extracted witness, clip. The witness absent. will suspend for a moment. <laughs> it is not proper to refer disparagingly or with, to a member of the committee. Uh, the witness right. will not do that again. Witness may continue. Sure, even though I was called despicable. Um, witness may not refer to a member of the committee as stupid. I didn't refer to him as stupid. That's not what I said. That's not what I said at all. You, you didn't listen to what I said. You are stupid, Nadler! May I continue? Wait, please. As I said, he is assuming that black people will not go pursue the full two-hour clip. And he purposefully extracted, he cut off and you didn't hear the question that was asked of me. He's trying to present as if I was launching a defense of Hitler in Germany when in fact the question that was asked of me was pertaining to whether or not I believed that Hitler was a, whether I, or not I believed in nationalism and that nationalism was bad. And what I responded to was that I do not believe that we should be characterizing Hitler as a nationalist. He was a homicidal, psychopathic maniac that killed his own people. A nationalist would not kill their own people. That is exactly what I was referring to in the clip, and he purposely wanted to give you a cut up similar to what they do to Donald Trump to create a different narrative. That was unbelievably dishonest, and he did not allow me to respond to it, which is worrisome and should tell you a lot about where people are today in terms of trying to drum up narratives. By the way, I would like to also add that I work for Prager University, which is run by an Orthodox Jew, and a single Democrat showed up to the embassy opening in Jerusalem. I sat on a plane for 18 hours to make sure that I was there. I'm deeply offended by the insinuation of, of revealing that clip without the question that was asked of me. Thanks, Mrs. Owens, and I get the remainder of my time. <laughs> C-SPAN posted that little clip on their Twitter account and it quickly became the number one most viewed video of all time on their Twitter account, currently with over six and a half million views. The liberal media is furious with the rise of Candace Owens because she's convincing so many black people to finally leave the Democrat party. And this is how NBC reported on her after her appearance at the hearing. YouTube tested, Trump approved. How Candace Owens suddenly became the loudest voice on the far right. The far right, they say, which according to the dictionary is the extreme right wing of the political party. She's an extremist. According to Wikipedia, the term is often used to describe Nazis. Candace Owens is a Nazi. She's the female version of Clayton Bigsby. They think that blind KKK member from the Dave Chappelle show. There doesn't seem to be an end coming anytime soon to the outbreak of this liberal plague, but one can hope to find a cure someday. To help support the cause and my YouTube channel, head on over to my online store at markdice.com or click the link in the description below and order my liberalism find a cure t-shirt, long sleeve, or hoodie. Like all of my shirts, you can get it in a whole bunch of different colors, and this design comes in two different styles. 
you don't want to get the one with the big, bold graphic on the front, there is another version of the shirt. So head on over to markdice.com or click the link in the description below and check them out. <laughs>